What's up, Grinders? This is Jez7780 here with a Grinds Gaming Bite. Oh, man, uh, this is a special edition. I got a special guest with me. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talk. I can't believe it. Jim Gordon Ramsey Ryan is in the building. He is here for this Grinds Gaming Bite because we're going to be talking about Horizon Forbidden West, which will be coming out in a few short weeks for the PS5 and the PS4 Pro. And oh, baby, does it look good. And then on the other end, we'll talk about... I also got a good friend here, too. SWB audio capture not registered. Yeah, I got another special guest, Phil Gloria Spencer. He'll be here, and he'll be talking about uh, Halo uh, Infinite Update, something that just caught my eye, and I didn't see a lot of people talking about it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. What's up, Grinders? Mr. Grinds My Gear is here. Pull up to the bar, grab yourself a drink. It's Friday. 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 Yeah, you probably don't want me to start like that. But man, oh man, is welcome to another edition of the Grinds Gaming Bite. Uh, thank you so much for your support of the other previous videos and also the Gaming Grindhouse on Monday nights at 8.30. And shout out to all the new and uh, concurrent VIP Grinders. Where are you? Where are you guys? There we go. Podding with Herman Holtz doing splits, man. And that's all Herman Holtz has been doing, man. Splits. It's quality games. But shout out to all the VIP grinders. And thank you again for all your support for the channel. Check it in on Monday nights at 8.30. Eastern Standard Time for the Gaming Grindhouse. Where we go down the list of hot topics, hot takes, and some grinding of gears. But we're going to talk about some news. Today, man, I tell you, they have been peeling back the onion of this Horizon Forbidden West. And my goodness, my goodness, this game is huge. It is huge. And one of the craziest things that they just showed off is that in announcing that it went gold on the PS blog, is that they showed the PS4 Pro audio version of it. Not registered. And goodness gracious. I wanted to share it with you guys. Wow. All I'll say is, wow. They did it. They really did it. The PS PS4 Pro version of the game looks damn good. Now, I'm not playing on the PS4 Pro, man. I'm going to play on the PS5, but, you know, it looks incredible. Like, the colors are still there. The detail. It's amazing. But the first game was really incredible looking. And now, this, this is a, a, a special case of where... I feel that the PS5 version of the game put on the PS4 Pro benefited the PS4 Pro in the sense that it made the game look that good. Pretty incredible. You know, for a cross-gen game, this is what we're talking about, you know? So if you have a PlayStation 4 Pro, you know, you're going to be getting a great game as well. Great looking game. But then it was like, well, what are the differences then of the PS5? And, you know, I went to uh, to go check some of these things out. And, um, you know, look, this is the difference between the two of them. Right here. Like, look at the facial animations. Like, the PS4 Pro version looks great. But, man, that PS5 just hits at another level, man. Another level. <laughs> really incredible. It is insane. Just the visuals that you're seeing with this... Uh, with this game and actually uh one of the things that i did <laughs> one of the things that i did was uh you know i had the picture of the ps5 uh version and then i also did um you know and i got a clip from the uh the ps4 right so i this tweet's been rolling around over seven wow 700 700 likes over 700 likes here but yeah, this is what I pulled from the, the PS4, and then this is what I had on the background. I mean, and oh my goodness, you had to see the... Oh, this is cinematic, this, not what? Registered. You, you want to know what? Just look at the details, okay? And maybe it is a cinematic, maybe it's in-game, but I guarantee you, you taking photos in, 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 in uh, the PS5 version, you're going to be getting incredible vid photos. The game looks incredible. But you could just see, like, it doesn't necessarily... You could see this, the detail in her hair, 
in the outfit and just in the face alone like you could see that you know this is definitely a last gen version of the game but nonetheless it looks great but that ps5 just hits on another level and uh i can't wait to be playing this game the, the animations the the story the combat they have just there's so much to it that um I just can't wait to, to get into it and and just you know explore this world and because that was the one thing the biomes and horizon were absolutely incredible and they really did a, a, an amazing job just of adding enemy variety with the environmental variety and uh you know the, the photos that have been coming out of this game you know, shout out to salty great show with the, with the salty's podcast it's like but man this thing's hitting on another level. It is crazy of the visuals of this game and the different outfits and stuff. It's going to be so cool when it comes out. And uh, yeah, really, really excited to play this game. And then again, this is the PS4 version here. And yeah, she has a transversal and then the animations look just as good as well. But my goodness. I know that mount thing on there. Crazy. That's so cool you can ride those now. Because before you want you couldn't ride them like they don't ride on like the cow thing and the, the horse thing. But um the combat looks looks like they improved everything from the first game. They basically, you know, because one of the things that I had an issue with the first game is that it was just the the um the melee combat really wasn't very it was there, but S it was more of a audio capture, Like she wasn't seeming like she dressed her so much. Like it just seemed like she was in this world of uh, these huge machines and just really had a disadvantage. Um, and you really didn't have this sense of just like just blowing things up and getting out of there. Like and this one, they've given us so many abilities and capabilities with her meleeing and the powers that she has and stuff to really, uh, and even the most important things, the transversal. You know, using that parachute thing using the oh my god that's crazy using the parachute thing using the um you know the hook shot and things like that to get at different elevations and uh you know like that it, it, and just to propel up in the air you know that's just going to add such a dynamic to the combat of this game it is going to be absolutely uh absolutely incredible so i'm hoping you know that it's going to review well you know metacritic wise i'm really you know I don't like you know agree with some of the, the, my panel members on Saltiest Podcast. Like I don't really think, you know, it depends. I think everybody's gonna give it really high scores, but I would say it sits around ninety one. Probably should deserve higher, but you never know. People are gonna. It, it, I don't trust the media now nowadays. You know they might tr throw that seventy dollar grinds my gears. The seventy dollar uh, price. Oh well, seventy dollars. You know I don't know. You know and kind of use that now, nah, please. You know what? Stop pocket watching, please. There's there's a there's a difference in quality. Uh, you know, people will price stuff that they find value in, and there's a difference between like a filet mignon and chuck steak. All right, you could be like, well, I just eat steak. You know, why well, get the filet mignon? Yeah, you can, but there's a difference in quality. So if people deem this quality is worth it, and let people buy it, and that's it. Don't be like they're shoving it down your throat. Goggle, goggle, goggle. It's a rat. S W P audio man. capture. Man, he, he comes Not around, man. He knows when he got somebody with the with the cheap ass gaming. But anyway, yo, Horizon looking lit. Can't wait to play it. You know, I, I can't wait to play this game and uh, you know get ready for a lot of photos because you know I love that. Love my photos, and you know what? The best quote of the ever. Best quote ever. Enough from me. We're gonna have the games do our talking. And that's been it, you know. And and uh, oh, and the other thing too with Horizon has been that the they also showed uh, Gran Turismo. That you know that was looking crazy, and uh, you know, and then there's the um, the update for uh, Uncharted just came out for that one. So like. I'm telling you, they are really doubling down on the games. They know they got the lineup coming up. So, like, this is exactly what they do. They got the games do the talking because this is what you're going to be playing now. This is what is going to happen in the next week or so. And then right after that, another another hit, another one, another one, all demonstrating the capabilities and power of the machine, of the console that you purchased, whether it's the PS4 or the PS5. 
PS5 is going to have all those features. Adaptive triggers, 3D sound. Incredible. As a console should be, correct? As games, you have the software to match the hardware. And you're playing this now. This is not on a list. Hold on tight. 2026 is going to be a hit. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you then. This is coming out now. This is going to be here now. You're going to play this now. That's the difference. And it's showing the capabilities of the machine now. Even though we're two years in. That's the difference. And they're just focusing on the now. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You don't have a laundry list of games that Sony has listed SW, out. This is what everybody's captured, working on. Everybody. Not registered. Here's the list. Multiple projects. Unannounced projects. You don't have that. They're focusing on the immediate. Because they know that they have the content. And the games are doing the talking. And this game is going to blow the roof off of this generation. This is what a start to this generation with this game. A visually impressive, amazing thing. And I expect to see a lot of, you know, those the graphical analysis and all that stuff just going, this is some master, master, masterful stuff right here. And you're going to, and, and, and these are capabilities and, and, and that I'm sure other developers will use moving forward. It's going to be a real tentpole game visually we just gotta make sure that the story holds up and the story was pretty good in the first one it was very interesting very in depth uh i thought so so we'll see how this one goes uh where they continue with this and it doesn't it does seem that aloy is going to have a more of a cast of characters and we were talking about it on the other show um about how it's taking some of the sub characters or the the her co-stars of the first game and really having them grow out and help her and assist her in what she's trying to do and with her mission. Which is always great because you expand the cast of characters. You don't just have it just on her. Because she kind of found herself in the first one. It's traditional superhero movie type thing. Like the first one is sort of like her finding herself, her origins, what's going on, why am I here, what's my ties to the past, and what is my purpose. She found her purpose in the first one. Now, she, with these skills and this knowledge, she's going to move forward into a new land in the second one. And As she's going to bring the people that she met along her journey registered. of finding herself with her to face new enemies, new tribes, new AI, new machines. And that's why sequels are really could be better, mostly are better, than the first one because the first one's an origin story this is an origin story and the second one is where you go bigger and better because you know where she came from you know what she could do you know her capabilities you know but now we just do it bigger and better and that goes for games and movies so i'm looking forward to see what they do and you see that's what her transversal all that stuff is more and, and they've been doing such a great job with this with revealing more and more of this game that I'm really hyped up. And uh, we will see when we get our hands on it when it comes out in a couple of weeks right near Valentine's Day. So stay tuned. But it's gone gold. And it's amazing. The PS4 version looks pretty damn good as well. So, you know, it's a, and it goes through along the lines of like, I feel with this game that they, they, they basically had the PS5 and they ported it to the PS4. Like because of the, the restricted of the console CPUs. And uh, and the PS4 version benefit from this. Like it's not a, a really bad looking version from you know from the visuals that they're showing. And the first one looked great. But like the fact is that you know they kept they're keeping the detail and stuff. Maybe not the fine details and the lighting and things like that. I'm sure there didn't be graphical differences and you see some of that stuff in her face and in her outfit. But it benefited from being a next-gen cross-gen title. And that's great for those who haven't gotten the PS5 yet. So, you know, you, you'll be in for a treat. And uh, and I think you'll be able to upgrade this. Like, uh, I think this is the last one that you'll be able to upgrade 
uh for free and then after that there's gonna be the ten dollar charge which i just did i owned lost legacy so i just made 10 bucks and i got now the complete edition which i'm going to be playing that might even stream it on this channel um some of the uncharted uh lost like the uh, lost legacy and uncharted 4 the ps5 version of the remastered version but if, why not i want to just try to adapt the triggers 3d sound man and that game from the reviews the same from the uncharted my goodness they're saying that this is just incredible they were that's the thing these games were incredible looking when they were on the ps4 so now on the ps5 they look even better and you're playing them now and you got new games you got old games it's just a perfect balance so let's change tones right let's go let's go somewhere so this is something that just popped up right for me as we go into our next topic here uh talking about the now and the current let's move this now to wait stay tuned it's gonna take time we're going to figure out where to put it. So I was uh, just browsing the internet. And I came upon uh, this tweet here. And uh, where we go here? From our good friend Joseph Staten. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity to help build the future of Halo Infinite. Leading the evolution of Hot and Soul the Xbox. The game's combat sandbox. And I look and it says, sandbox design lead in Redmond. I'm like, a design lead? But the sandbox, the game just released in December. So maybe they're doubling down on the sandbox. I was like, wow, that's pretty um, that's pretty interesting. I was like, so wait, sandbox. I remember that's what they spoke about, the single player and the sandbox. I'm like, where did I hear the sandbox before? And I was like, oh, I remember a good friend of this channel. Day one SW Halo gun. There captured. it is. Not I registered. remember. That's what I heard about Sandbox. And let's see what the questions that were asked during that. If join me as we go back again to February, I think it was February of 2020. And uh let's hear about the weapons and the day one guns. So in short, the answer is yes to both. We are gonna have weapons that are altered, the weapons that launched the game originally. Those will be altered over time, and then we're definitely going to be introducing new weapons. Uh, brand new weapons, never before seen weapons, classic weapons, legacy weapons, all those kind of things we'll be looking at and discussing and figuring out what the game needs at that time. But just to, just I guess, to clarify a little bit with altered weapons that go out day one, Day one. When we say alter, we're, we're primarily going to be looking at things that are meta shifting and tuning knobs, but we're going to do everything we can. And, and I guess previous to my to the last answer and the other question is, we're going to keep weapons, the feel of the weapons, the same and the roles of the weapons. We're not going to take a weapon and change its role all up. Uh, we're not going to uh change the feel of the weapon the br75 is going to play like the br75 it's going to have that three round burst it's going to have that but what cadence. about the rest of the weapons so we'll be looking at things uh for example the like the damage output for example so or we're perhaps maybe weapons, the, but wait why the rolls and the ever crazier things have happened and you know there's this is a service game oh well, 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 never Crazier things have happened, and you know, the, Hun? what? What? We say alter. Those are the things we're going to try to stay away that? from. But that being said, never say never. Crazier things have happened, and you know, there's this is a service game. So SWB we'll audio capture, not Anything registered. That does change, we will communicate to you the as service the game. And then we ask the about, let's the ask why. the question about the, um, the gunfighter magnum from Halo 5. The Kynes, classic right? weapons. Where are those? Yeah, sure. I think that's a that's a pretty good. Where way are to the look new weapons? Where are the classic weapons? The ones you took out okay. of the game. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of at least how I view it when I go hands on with it. What is very talking about the sandbox, but I guess so wait. from Halo CE to Halo 2, and then they changed again from Halo 2 yeah. to Halo 3, and then we're talking about the so guns, on so right? On. Every new it's Halo evolving. Game it's a service to, game. To change legacy weapons. He's going to figure out when and we're where. We're going to bring a legacy weapon back. Oh. We want it to be and play like that weapon that that players 
remember and understand without having weird design decisions on why this thing is is changed, whatnot. We really want these things to be what they are. And so that's where um, with the Magnum, we wanted to have, uh, we wanted to make sure that when we do it, that we do it right. And with our design goals of pistols being like pistols and not being hyper accurate from really far away, that's where the sidekick is, is where that weapon is. It's that true sidearm that someone can, can use quickly and efficiently. So when are you going to bring back the other and weapons? And then our yeah, rifles like play great more, road map, much yeah. more closer to rifles. So I guess that, I don't know. I mean, I could talk forever on this stuff, and that's why I, I like doing these kind of things, John, and, and talking about the sandbox. But I guess I, I don't, just, just a, I'll just cut it short there, is that, yeah, we, we love the Magnum. It's, a, it's special in our hearts. And when and if and how we bring it back, we want to make sure we do it right and that the fans will recognize it as the Magnum. And we're not, we're not tweaking it or changing it from what it used to be. All right, so the... Man, he sounds like there's a lot coming for this game. Like it's a roadmap, there's some not registered. The, the, the day one guns, but then they're going to find ways to bring back the classic weapons. We visited this video so many times before because day one guns kind of defined, like, I think a perfect time to bring back the gun is at launch. This is after the year delay. This was February. This interview was done. And talking about the sandbox and how it's going to evolve, and and then we're gonna we're gonna figure out when to bring it back. And it's a service game, you know. We'll we'll tweak things here and there, and and you know I'll we'll I'll be here. I'm the sandbox lead designer. Oh, wait, wait that was that was his title. That 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 was his title. He was the ex. What? What? Oh. A few moments later. Oh. Oh my, he sounded like he had a great plan about this service. Oh, oh, oh my, he left, he left, he, he left the sandbox. He was, he had such a roadmap, a plan. It's a service game. He loves his job. He loved it. He talked about it all day. He loved it. He left. After nine years. And what, wait, but when did he leave? I, do, do you remember Xbox channels, games? Who could, I, I don't recall. I don't know. Maybe I missed it, but he, he, he left. The lead sandbox designer left the sandbox. When did he leave the sandbox? He left the sandbox on December 13th. Grinders, when did the campaign drop? For Halo Infinite. December 8th? Do drop the campaign. The campaign drops on December 8th. SW he leaves. Audio capture, five days later. Peace. The lead sandbox design. The person who the campaign is the sandbox. We're going to bring back guns and tweak this. We're doing this. We're doing that. The lead person, the representative of the sandbox, just when his job is about to kick off, it's a service game. The service finally launched in Halo. The dude left. After nine years, his job was now to build out this sandbox, bring you the content that should have been there on day one after a year delay. And I was just like, what? The guy that made the video about day one guns and the lead sandbox person just left a few days after the campaign, the sandbox launched. Telling me it's a service game, saying we'll bring back classic guns when we find, and I know it's a team, but the lead person who was talking about the sandbox left right when the sandbox, like, don't you think that's a little peculiar? And then, just a, a, a month later, Staten's like, eh, we need a, a new sandbox design lead. Excuse me? And the dust, there's Dustin Laguerre trying to get a job, you know, because that's what he's mainly trying to do. You know, good friend of the channel. There he is. 
I don't know, I'm trying to apply for a job. I guess that now we know his motive for for, uh, for for you know supporting Xbox. Everybody wants a job at Microsoft, I guess. But Joseph, Sta- I didn't even I didn't even notice that till now. But I saw this email. I'm like, wait a second, a lead design. I'm like, wow, that seems like pretty high level for a game that just announced that the sandbox just released the start of this journey that, that they mentioned in Halo, the start registered. of the journey. Dude stopped at the starting line. He's like, I'm done. I'm out of here. And again, you leave for different reasons. But man, oh man, I don't think that that's a great thing for Halo. My goodness, especially this guy was like, he he was he was the only lead. And I remember when I saw his video, I was like, I was like, I heard that before. Well, sandbox opened and he's like, I'm out. Grand opening, grand closing. But I just thought everybody should just point that out because I didn't even realize. And I saw the job post. I saw that on Twitter last night. And I was like, wait a second. They're looking for a lead sandbox person. I'm like, wait, I thought they had one. I remember the guy talking about day one guns. And then I went back to the video. I was like, yeah, that's him. And then I just clicked on it and said he left in December. Don't I, I think that's a big deal, especially for a service game. For a game that's lacking content, that now the single player story is the start of the sandbox. He sounded very ambitious. I could talk about it all day. Uh, they were the classic weapons. We hear you. We're going to find a great place to put them in. And I was grinding gears going, why not at launch? Why? Why? Everything should be there. You should be adding new stuff. Not, be, not take stuff out and edit later and go, look what we did. But he left few days after the game released man uh, welcome 10,000 employees to Microsoft enjoy like you guys can't even get your franchise that you had for 20 years on the under helm like you keep talking about a service game and what's interesting is that the service part of it is the worst aspect of Halo the in the community is just livid with the big team battle not working, like it, 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 it is died down. It might, we were playing registered. it in November. It was interesting, but the maps dried up. The content, the progression still sucks. Everything you have to pay for and the stupid. I'm not buying nothing. It's not even that compelling. Helmets for twenty for ten dollars. Then they like, oh, we're reducing the prices to seven dollars, but you can only buy them in ten dollar increments. Hmm. Tell me about that. The monetization of it's ridiculous. But then they say you got it for free. You know. It's just unfortunate. That they Frankenstein this this game. And it hurts. It hurts me. I love Halo. I love it. But this was my fear. When they announced that thing back in 2016. All our games are going to Game Pass. I'm like oh no. I was like oh no. Like that. What are these games going to be like? Like, why are they committing all of it? I'm not saying everything needs to be a big blockbuster game. It should. I don't mind. But just, it's unfortunate what they did to this Frankenstein piece. $60 for that sandbox campaign. No forge. No no co-op campaign. Day one guns. No roadmap. We're coming into February now. What service is this? They're still trying to fix it. They're sorting things out. They're, mon- they're fixing the store. We hear you. They're scrambling around like in a hamster wheel. And your design lead sandbox person leaves a few days after the sandbox opens. In any business, that would be a, a that would be a, oh my goodness. Here's this restaurant here. He just opened up the brand new restaurant here. It launched. I have this plan. I'm going to have this great menu. All this stuff. I did this. I'm here to open up the restaurant. And then a few days later, SWB the guy leaves. SWB audio like, oh, man. Not registered. I just thought it was crazy. And I understand it's a team of people. But when you lead person, your, 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 your head person leaves, that doesn't seem like it's very... Like he had a great plan and was really confident in the future of this sandbox that it was going to be infinite. Halo Infinite. 
you would think the ambition would start right when the thing launches because that was the thing. It's a service game. Service game launched. Let's start the service. Let's go. We got a roadmap. I'm ready. That's when you go? You go after the thing, like, after you launch the sandbox? That's the whole start of the service. That's when the party starts. Joseph Staten saying this is the start of a journey. Come with us on this journey. And the fact that he's looking a month later for the, a replacement. Dude, all I know is that caught me off. So that caught me by surprise. I was like, wow, I don't see anybody else talking about this. The guy of the nine years, the guy who was updating on 343's website about the sandbox left right after the sandbox launched. Wow. But grinders, you hear it here. You hear it in the grinds night. And I want to thank you for listening to another show. Please go check out the other videos. Check out the gaming grind house on Mondays. And also check the previous gaming bites that I've put on the channel. And stay tuned. We're going to be doing some game nights. I'm going to be doing some streaming. The channel, we're close to 1,200 subs. I want to thank everybody for all their support. And keep it locked here. Right here. Thank you again, Grinders. Talk to everybody soon. I'm out. SWP audio capture not registered.